Hello everyone. Um, for your veterinary epidemiology course this week and for the next, or these two weeks rather, we will be discussing about your measures of health. So what are these measures of health? So they are they enable the quantification of occurrence of disease, health eventualities, or production problems in a population. So, it basically aims to answer how much disease is present in a certain population, which animals are affected, or if there are specific types of animals that are um, more prone to developing the disease or the problem, what, what, um, saan or where these animals are, um, when this disease occurs or this problem occurs. And how many animals are exposed to a potential risk factors? And to be specific, what are these potential risk factors? And these are important um, together with, of course, your measures of health for us to enable to develop in an hypothesis. So an hypothesis, an explanation as to why um, the answers to these questions come about. And of course, for us to test such a hypothesis if it is true. So. There are several reasons to count disease events, um, according to Gardner. So first, to determine the mechanism of spread of the disease, the distribution and trend of disease by time, location, and animal characteristics. Again, to answer the question that we have previously discussed. Number two, to determine the impact of the disease on the study population, so the risk of a given animal in the population of having the disease. So again, related pa rin siya doon sa mga W's in H questions that we post in the first slide. So to estimate cost of size, cost such as size of facility required to providing adequate health services for a specific animals. So basically we're talking about in number three, our response. So is there a need for us? Uh, what are the needs, facilities needed for us to respond to such animal health eventualities? And to, of course, evaluate the implementation and effectiveness of disease control and prevention program. So basically, what it, um, the number four leads to the point of what uh, number three is talking about. So what are we actually counting? What health measures of health, what are we actually measuring? What are these? So we count clinical cases. So for example, number of buffaloes with clinical mastitis. Subclinical cases, number of goats that are, that are positive for food rot but do not somehow show the, the clinical signs. Animals with certain characteristics, those with clinical signs. And cases of certain production or production parameters, let's say number of cows conceived in the first breeding, then, or a combination of the three. So when we, we are talking about um, quantification of diseases, health eventualities, production um, irregularities in the populations, we need to discuss what type of population we are talking about or what we are measuring. So for example, I am there, you actually have two types of population, your closed and your open population. So in your closed population, and during the entirety of your observation or study, there is no addition or removals um, occurring during the defined follow-up. So for example, here, just put up a picture of a, let's say, a backyard farm with 10 or so pigs and of the five-month grow-out phase, no, no, no pigs of the, and uh, no pigs in the pens have died or have sick or have been sold. So within that observation period, no addition or removals have occurred. So those, for example, that is a closed population. On the other hand, you had your open dynamic population, wherein a population, it is a population where individuals are continuously added or removed during the observation period or the follow-up period. So for example, in a poultry flock, of course, may mga namamatay due to other reasons like illnesses and others, um, undernutrition, etc. So usually in a poultry farm or a broiler farm, I think as of the moment, it's still around 2-3% mortality rate is still accepted. So may na, may na, basically, may namamatay talaga. So the additions or removals may be due to births, um, purchases na bibili, or deaths. Again, as I have mentioned in this, for example, in a broiler farm. However, um, 
mahirap i-differentiate actually in veterinary medicine. Um, colloquially speaking, mas mahirap i-differentiate ang closed and open populations. Because, excuse me, especially in backyard situations, hindi naman talaga kasi nagiging closed often times. We would like to think of it as a closed population, but often times, syempre, may mga again as 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 this as pointed out here sa description ng open and dynamic populations, may nanganak, may binibili, na bibili, binibili, or may namamatay. In epidemiology in general, you actually have three modes or three types of measuring health or disease eventualities. You have your proportion, ratio, and rate. So for your proportion, it's basically a fraction in which a numerator is included in the denominator. So it is, it is said to be dimensionless. Um, it could be a decimal number from 0 to 1, but it is usually expressed as a percentage. So yung decimal na 0 to 1 would be times 100 and it will become a percentage. So for example, um, a proportion, as I said here, is a proportion of sheep infected with Caseous lymphadenitis in Iloilo is 10%. So that 10% na may, na may caseous lymphadenitis is included in the sheep population that was studied. Again, 7%, um, approximately, approximately 7% of the goat um, died from pew fever, as I said here. So 5 of 75. So these 5, the numerator is actually 5 of these 75 that is at risk. So that is a proportion. So for example, in your class, um, there are 10 people who passed veterinary epidemiology. So let's say there is 100 of you in class. So that's a 10% 10 passing rate or proportion. So that 10% um, is part of the 100 that took the class. So that's that's an example of a proportion. It is said to be dimensionless because it does not have, um, it does not depend on an element of time, for example. The next, you have your ratio, wherein the denominator it, it is still a fraction in which the numerator is not part of your denominator. Still, it is dimensionless, not, not much element of time. And or pwede siyang ratio between two measures na may element of time. So, it could be dimensionless or not. So, for example, of a ratio is the ratio of bulls to cow in a beef herd is 1 to 20. So, the bull, the number of bull, hindi mo naman pwedeng is isabay sa cows ang bull kasi lalaki naman ang bull. Hindi mo siya isab pwede isabay sa count ng cows kasi primarily cows are female, right? Or, again, ito yung sinasabi na it could have an element of time. There is ratio of, um, tawag nito, ang canine obesity is 1.4 times higher for dogs fed with non-commercial or than commercial food. So, you are ratio, near ratio mo yung risk between development of canine obesity among those who were fed non-commercial than those who were, compared to those who were fed commercial. So, of course, yung non-commercial is not part of those who are fed commercial food. So again, the numerator is not part of the denominator. So that is a ratio. A rate, in, on the other hand naman, represents an in instantaneous change in one quantity per unit change in another quantity, which is usually time. So basically, in, in, with regards to measures of health, we usually associate it is to, inst to instantaneous change in the health status of animals with regards to time. So, for example, here, the incidence rate of piglet scars is 4 cases per 100 pig days at risk. So, every 100, 1,000 pig days at risk, there would be 4 cases of piglet scarring. With regards to me um, measurement of health, what we usually or most commonly measure is actually mesh, uh, we measure morbidity. So morbidity, we measure the occurrence of disease. So it is basically the extent of disease or the disease frequency within a defined population. And usually, or we actually have two modes of measuring morbidity. We either check the number of new cases, which is incidence, 
or the number of cases regardless whether they are new or not. First, we have incidence. So basically what we look for when we are trying to um, decipher the incidence or uh, calculate the incident is how frequently initially susceptible animals become ill as they are observed over time. So basically, how frequent does your animals become sick over the observation period? So when you say incident case, the, the disease status changes from being just susceptible to become diseased, so from healthy to sick as we observe it through time. We usually measure when we look for incidence, actually two types of incidence measures. You have your incidence proportion or cumulative incidence or incidence risk and your incidence rate. So for your cumulative incidence or incidence risk, basically it is the proportion of disease-free animals developing or dying of illnesses over a specified period of time. So how do you calculate this? So basically it is a fraction, it is a proportion after all, so the, it is the number of incident cases or those who develop the disease, number of those who develop the disease during the observation period and the total number of individuals at, um, initially at risk. So, it is a measure of risk of getting the disease or probability of getting the disease during the specified period which is your observation period. It is important to note that when you are trying to look for cumulative incidents or the incidence risk, animals should be disease free at the beginning so the status need to be ascertained so you have to test if your animal really does not have the disease or at least the disease wala sa area nyo mm. for it to be um it is important because it needs to be that your numerator is part of the denominator so hindi because it is a proportion so hindi pwedeng um hindi pwedeng maging at risk yung may sakit na so, basically, it is a measure of individuals and individuals' risk of contracting the disease within the risk period or the observation period. So, again, it is dimensionless. It is not, not, not bound by time. So, it could be a 0 to 1. So, it could be a decimal. Then, then it times na lang sa 100 for it to become a percentage. And it requires a period referent. So, it, there are several assumptions when we are trying to calculate for incidence risk. So, first, the population at risk is closed. So, not increasing nor decreasing. No animal is lost to follow up. And lastly, all animals are followed for the entire duration of the follow-up period of interest and each animal contributes roughly the same amount of time at risk because, again, kailangan nga walang mawala sa follow-up or during the observation period. Because everyone, so it's because everyone in the denominator, in the numerator na magkakasakit should be part of the denominator. So, here is an example of your, of how to calculate your cumulative incidence or incidence risk. So, for example, there are 120 caravals at USMPCC. At the start of the observation period, which was in June 2020, all of them were um, Bastrella multocida negative. So they were hemosep, hemosep negative instead at June 2020. Then six months after, at, uh, at the end of J December 2022, 25 were um, started to develop clinical signs of hemorrhagic septicemia. And these 25 were tested positive for the disease. So, your incidence risk is, of course, you calculate your numerator is the number of deceased individuals, then your denominator is your total population at risk at the beginning. So, of course, 25 is also part of the, or once part of the at-risk population. So, times 1 of 100, then you get, you will get that your incident risk or your cumulative incidence is 20.8%. So, for inter your interpret could interpret the result as um, the incidence risk of hemocep is 20.8% for the six-month observation period. 
So each carabao at the USMPCC had 20.8% chance or risk of acquiring hemocep during the follow-up period. So each animal had at, um, at least one-fifth of a chance of getting um, of getting sick of hemocep during the six-month observation period. Now, a sub-variant or a sub... Um, um, pwede mo na rin siya actually at i-attach doon sa incidence risk are attach, uh, attack rates rather. So, attack rates. This, um, this term is actually used during disease outbreaks. So, it is just a synonym a synonym of the incidence rate. So, it is a risk of acquiring the disease over a specified period of time. So, ganun, ganun pa din yun. So, this specified period of time could be the duration of an outbreak because attack rates are usually used in outbreaks. So, you have two, two rather, you have two um, um, types of attack rates. So, you have your overall attack rate. So, basically, calculate total number of new cases over total population at risk. Then you have your secondary attack rates, which is the total number of new cases, again, new cases during a contact, due to contact with the primary cases because, again, these are used during outbreaks. So secondary attack rate is the new number, or basically the number of new cases um, due to contact with the primary cases, yun yung numerator niya. Then the total population at risk, yung denominator. So basically, um, it is a measure of gano'ng kapilis nangyayari yung transmission. Now, the second type of um, incidence that you can actually calculate is the incidence rate or your incidence density. So basically, it is the instantaneous potential for change in disease status per unit time. So it's the number of new cases of disease that occur per unit of individual time at risk during a defined follow-up period. So sa madaling sabi, how fast is the disease occurring? So how many how many cases would occur per unit time? So to calculate your incidence rate, you need you need the numerator is the number of incident cases. So new new cases during the observation period. However, in contrast na nga sa inyong um, incidence risk, then the, the denominator is the accumulated sum of all the individuals time at risk. So it is the population, basically, it is the population time at risk. Gano ba kahaba yung at risk time of each animal? So, you sum that all up. So, it is a, what does it measure? So, it is a measure of a potential disease occurrence per unit time. So, how many, based on your incident, incident number of incident cases and your amount, um, amount of at risk time, how many cases would develop? Um, how many would be cases would develop over change per unit time? So as for example, balik tayo doon, 120 carabaos at the PCC initially that were initially hemocep, hemocep negative, hemorrhagic septicemia negative, then 25 got hemocep from the June to December observation period. Then of the 25, sampo were diagnosed um, were tested positive sa August, another 10 tested positive sa September, and another 5 tested positive during November. So it's very clear from the previous um, slide na the numerator is just the number of incident cases, so 25. Now, to calculate your denominator, you need it is the sum of all the population time at risk. So, you need to... Uh, you need to calculate this one. So, for example, um, the first 10 that were diagnosed or diagnosed in August, so basically that's two months before, after the start of the observation period. So, 10 animals were only, the, the first 10 animals that were diagnosed with hemocep in August were only at risk for two months. So, 10 times two months. The same goes here. Another 10 in September, so they were only at risk at for only three months. So, 10. Then, those who tested po tested positive during the November test, um, they were only at risk for 5 months. So, you times that, and plus, you also you sum it up, then you also add the time at risk of those who, were, who did not get hemorrhagic septicemia. So, there were 25 
who were not who did not get sick and they were observed they were at risk for six months so in total you had 600 um, 45 carabao months so you divide that you you you, yeah, you divide that then you you would get 0 0.039 cases per carabao month or you can multiply that by because, because that's very very small you may you may have difficulty in interpreting that you can multiply that to 12 forget one year or one carabao year carabao years rather or you can multiply it by 24 because it's 24 months naman ang two years so for example as what i've done here so it, it is approximately around 1.5 cases per two carabao years so it is a change that it basically measures the, the change of disease status of each animal per unit change in time so basically it's a measure of how fast are the incident cases developing in a population your second um, morbidity measure is actually prevalence so prevalence is the proportion of animals in a population that have the disease or disease or attribute at a specified point in time or over a specified period of time so in this case or in prevalence all cases are considered both new and pre-existing so unlike incidents which only um, considers new or incident cases in prevalence or prevalence we look at all types of cases both new and old that occurred at, at that spec specified point in time or specified period in time so basically that if you want to calculate the prevalence it is the number of existing cases over the size of the population or the size of the population that you tested with. So again, just a note, the numerator includes all old and new cases. So do take note that when you are we are speaking of prevalence, there is no temporal sequence inherent in the calculation. So we do not um, take into account when the animal got sick as long as they tested positive kung ano man yung test na gagamitin mo so what does that what, what, what does this mean so you do not actually see the development of the disease because a unlike in incidents you did not test the animal to make sure that they are free from the disease at this at this um at per, when we see, when we use prevalence as a measure of morbidity we just pinpoint a specified um, a period of time or a, a specific period of time to collect samples then you test it so whether we are not after the number of new cases but rather the number of all cases both new and pre-existing so yun yung ilalagay mo sa you know, as a numerator rather so basically it is the measure of a pro the probability of an individual from the same population having the disease disease at a point in or period of time so unlike incidents we are we are measuring the probability of an individual's uh, individual's probability of development of disease of developing the disease here in prevalence we look at or we are looking for the probability of an individual from the same population having the disease at a point or period of time so gano ba um, how much likely is it that the animal has the disease whether it is new whether he recently had it or it is already pre-existing so yun yung mini measure natin sa prevalence so if we look at um, our situation again 120 carabals at US NPCC but we just randomly subjected it to hemosep testing on August 16 2022 25 were positive so basically you you measured your measurement ng incident ng incidents natin is the same as your prevalence so 20.8 however your interpret your interpretation changes so again 20.8 of the 120 carabos from the us and pcc were infected with pasturella multocida or yung disease causing agent ng hemorrhagic septicemia however dito na tayo nagkakaiba 
each animal had a 20.8 probability of having the disease at the time of testing. Again, probability of having the disease at the time of testing compared to yung sa incident natin na um, the interpretation of which is that each animal would have a 20.8 probability of developing the disease. So, yun yung difference nila. There are two types of prevalence proportions. So, you have your point prevalence. So, basically, that, that, that previous example is a, a, a point prevalence because um, there's a specified period of time of such as a particular date, yung OVA 16 natin. So, it is basically the total number of current cases or attribute in a population at a specified um, point in time. So, period prevalence naman is that it is the total number of current or cases or attribute over an interval of time. So, as an example of this, let's look at this figure. So, this figure is actually, it is trying to look for the prevalence of lameness in a herd of cattle. So, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cattle at the start of the observation period, which is the entire month of January. So, they started observing lameness on January 6. So, that is a point prevalence. So, there's a point prevalence of 3 over 10. So, that's 30%. Um, it's point prevalence because they just checked on a specific period of time. In the same case here. They, they were able to observe two um, cases. So, the, the point prevalence on July 20 is 2 um, to 20%, so 2 over 10. Now, the period prevalence of the entire month from January 1 to January 31 is 7 because there, uh, there is an occurrence of third, uh, 7 cases of uh, 7 of the animals developed lameness during the entire month. So, it's a 70% period per Lameness period prevalence for the herd, for the 10 cattle herd. So, I hope you will be able to differentiate the difference between or identify the difference between point prevalence, which is the proportion of cases during a specified period of time, or period prevalence, or the proportion of cases during a specified period or interval of time. So, with regards to the two measures of morbidity, you have your prevalence and your incidence, there's actually a relationship between them and also at similarities and um, differences. So for prevalence, as previously mentioned, there is no temporal sequence, so not, but there is an incidence risk. So what does it mean? Sa prevalence, we do not see the animal developing the disease, whereas, whereas in incidence, we see it because we test the animal before the observation period. We see it developing the disease. And in the prevalence, of course, in the numerator, we include all cases regardless whether it's new or not. But in incidence, we only include the new cases, the incident cases. So for for what intended purpose or what does it really what does it really tell? as a measure of health. So the prevalence describes the probability of an individual from the population of having the disease. Again, the probability of an individual um, from the population having the disease. However, the si incidence risk naman, or basically the risk, it is the prediction or the, the probability that an individual from the same population will develop the disease. So, it is a probability of developing the disease that is your incidence risk or the risk of developing the disease. Now, your prevalence is actually based on both the incidence and the duration of the disease. So, high prevalence of a disease within a population might reflect high incidence or prolonged survival without cure or both. Conversely, low prevalence might indicate low incidence, a rapid fatal, fatal disease, or fast recovery. So if you want to actually calculate your incidence, if, if you have value of your incidence in the average duration of the disease, you can actually just multiply it, get your prevalence, and you can derive 
the average duration of the disease as well as your incidence from the same um, from the same formula. So there are several factors actually that would affect your um your prevalence. So of course, this is still in relation to the relationship between your prevalence and your incidence. So when there's a change in incidence, um, a whether a decrease or increase in your incidence, there is also a, de a decrease or increase in your prevalence. Because do take note that in incidence we are we are specifying new number of cases. So when more incident um, cases are discovered, so dumadami din yun, ta idadagdag yun sa numerator ng prevalence. So, when there is an increase in incidence, there is also an increase in prevalence. So, longer duration of disease due to therapy. So, improvements in therapy of the disease thus prolonging the life of the diseased animal. So, that increases your prevalence because makakaunt na siya sa numerator. So, when new, count, new cases arises, dadagdag na siya sa numerator. Hindi siya aalis doon sa numerator. However, if the duration of the disease is self-limiting, so shorter ang duration niya, the prevalence would be decreased because mas madaming madadagdag sa denominator because they, they become sick but the duration is, the duration of the sickness is um, only self-limiting or shorter. So, if there's an uh, improved cure rate, so improvements in therapy resulting to recovery, so decreased din ang prevalence. So, basically the same point here, mas daming madadagdag, mas madaming madadagdag sa denominator. So, um, another is that when there is an improved diagnostic facility, so more sophisticated um, diagnostic tests are used, much better diagnostic tests are used, nag increase your prevalence because there's an increased probability of you getting positive results. So, mas madami yung madadagdag sa numerator. Now, if the disease has a high case fatality rate, so rapid death and removal of cases from the population, baba pa ang prevalence because, again, ibabawas muna siya sa, madaming mababawas sa numerator because nagkakamatayan na yung mga animal. Another is in migration of cases, so movement of animals from one place to another that would actually increase your prevalence. So, for example, uh, another example is in migration of healthy animals, importation of healthy animals that would decrease your population because dadagtagan ang inyong denominator. And in contrast to sa previous, migration of cases, tataas ang prevalence mo because dadag, madadagdagan ka ng new narrator. So, there are these are examples of several factors that could perhaps affect your prevalence. So, after discussing your measures of morbidity, we now have your mortality measures. So, basically, si mortality naman, si mortality measures are basically analogous lang sila ng incidence measurements ninyo. So, you have your cumulative mortality or mortality risk, your incidence, analogous of your incidence risk. Then you have your mortality rate or your mortality density. So, si mortality risk is basically the same way, it's calculated the same way as your incident risk. So, your numerator would include the number of death due to a particular disease over a specified period of time. And your denominator is the number of animals at risk of dying at the um, initial observation period. Whereas your mortality um, rate naman, um, again, the numerator is the number of deaths. Um, then your denominator is um, the total time of observation for each animal until they die. Or until, until they die or of all the animals observed under the observation period. So it's basically just analogous in your incidence measures. Now there are other measures of mortality. You have your case fatality rate which is the proportion of animals with a specific disease that die from it. So basically, it is calculated um, by dividing the total number of death due to the particular disease and number of, of sick animals or sick individuals na nagkasakit due to the disease. So basically, how deadly is the disease? That's your case fatality rate. So 
For example, mini-measure yun siya sa COVID-19. You always hear case fatality rate. So basically, it is the proportion ng mga namatay dahil sa COVID. So it's a proportion of individuals or animals that died due to a particular disease. So when when a disease has a high case fatality rate, nakakamatay talaga siya. So, you also have your proportional mortality, which is the proportion of all death that are due to a particular cause or a disease, perhaps, for a specified period of time. So, it is calculated by dividing the total number of death due to the disease and dividing it by the total number of death in a population. So, what is the proportion of death ng death caused by a particular disease um, in compared to the total number of death, anong percentage ng total number of death is due to this particular disease. So that is what your proportional mortality is trying to figure out. Now, you also have your cause-specific mortality. So basically, it is the mortality from a specified cause for a population. So the numerator is the total number of deaths for a disease, where the denominator is the average number of animals at risk. So, um, again, then na. So it is a you just basically divide the number of death due to a particular disease, then the total number of population at risk. So it is the probability of dying for a cause and for due to a specific cause. So you have your crude mortality rate. So crude, um, meaning include almost include na lahat. So basically, it's a mortality rate from all causes of death for a population. So, total number of death um, yeah, total number of death due to disease and the population time. So, it is a rate after all. Then, you have your sex-specific mortality rate. So, that's due to the um, there are kumbaga, specific categories that you would um, input so for sex specific mortality rate so it is basically you divide the number of death due to disease in one sex then you divide it by the population with that with that particular sex so um mortality rate of covid-19 among males mortality rate of covid-19 among teenagers so that could be that would be age specific so there are other mortality rates that could be um molded using this or could be figured out using this um, method. So perhaps that concludes our video lecture for this particular topic, your measures of health. So I'm very sorry I'm recording during a thunderstorm. So medyo, if you can hear, medyo kumukulog. But um, I hope na you can learn power through it, learn through it. And uh, again, um, I'd like to remind you to read your reference text. Ayun, na-specify ko na nga sa post sa group natin kung ano anong parts ng reference text ninyo yung you might, you might want to read or you need to read for this particular topic and of course, take down notes. So, yun lang naman yung palagi kong advice sa inyo. So, if you have any questions, um, you can post lang doon sa ating Facebook group or you can email me personally using this one. So, once again, thank you very much for your attention and have a good day.